Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World Daily with me, John Jordan. So news we're looking at today is uh, Sky Mavis, the company behind Axie Infinity, has changed the breeding fees uh, for Axie NFTs again. I think it's the fourth time this year. Um, and uh, it's quite a detailed blog post here. I probably won't go through it in massive detail, but it's definitely worth reading. And sort of the takeaway here is even though at some point we expect sort of blockchain game uh, economies to be fairly automatically run, um, we're definitely not at this stage yet. Um, for Axie Infinity. So Axie Infinity is the biggest game economy out there by, by a long shot. So two and a half million DAUs, um, billions of dollars of, of token value in there. And this interesting sort of play to earn model where people are playing playing this game, extracting the, um, the, the uh, Smooth Love Potion, the SLP token, um, and then sort of, you know, obviously taking it off um, to maybe cash it out for, for fear or, or, or transfer it into other uh, blockchain tokens and, and build investments around that. So the thing about uh, the breeding, so the breeding is people creating new Axie NFTs. I think there's about 10 million of them at the moment. So really, um, the growth of Axie Infinity with players is sort of, you, know, you, you need three Axies to play the game. So as more people are playing the game, more Axies need to be bred. Um, and there's a sort of a dollar price attached to breeding Axies. Um, and the interesting thing here, the, the sort of tweaking that happens here is is how the um, how that cost is, is sort of um, spread between the two tokens that are required. So you can see here, there's the, um, the SLP token. This is the utility token in the game, created when people play the game, destroyed when uh, axes are bred. Um, and then there's the AXS token, which is the governance token, um, which is sort of the, the idea is you, you hold that as a asset where you might be able to vote using that in future. And also there's an idea that at the moment you can sort of stake that in terms of DeFi and, and you can earn a return on, on staking that, those tokens. So different sort of levels of token. And different pricing so the smooth love potion is worth about four cents four or five cents us cents uh, the axs token is worth about a hundred dollars um the axs token has gone up a lot um you know thousands of percent um the slp token you know there is volatility there but it's basically um actually pretty much at a, at a sort of a not an all-time low but um a sort of a current 2021 low and and because the sl the slp token is basically what people are extracting people are playing that to, to, to um that's how the play to earn works the key sort of short term issue for Sky Mavis is you don't want the SLP token to get too low because then it becomes uneconomic for people playing. And as we know, lots of people in the world are using playing for Axie Infinity to either get all or some of their, um, you know, just their living income. So they need to often what they're balancing is they're balancing um, to use less a excess token and more SLP token because then you're burning SLP um, and there's less of it around. So, so, that, so over time, hopefully that, that drives the price up. Um, so we can see here, so so this is always a sort of rebalancing between how money is, um, the, the, the idea is the cost of axes sort of roughly stays the same, of creating, of breeding an axis stays, sort of stays the same, um, but it's the, the, the proportion of, of, um, of tokens is, is, is what is changing. Um, so uh, and it obviously all depends on sort of the US dollar um, sort of velocity as well as, as these tokens. So so the, the cost of the AXS is halved, so it used to be one, one token, now it goes to half a token. This token actually goes to the treasury, so this is not destroyed. This is held in, in a treasury that at some point will be used by the Axie Infinity community, including Sky Mavis, to sort of maybe fund development or, or, or spend for marketing or, or do other things. So the idea is that this is sort of owned by the community. Uh, SLP uh, token uh, per breed will be tripled, um, and that, that token is just destroyed. So, so SLP tokens are made, minted, and, and burned, destroyed, um, just on a sort of a ongoing basis um, as required it's a utility token um, so this is the cost that you have different different ac every axi has a breed count so um, start off uh, at zero uh, and then the cost of doing the, the breed um, increases in terms of the SLP um, so there's a value system there obviously the ones that have uh, done less breeding are cheap are more expensive because they are cheaper to breed but basically if you keep breeding you end, you end up with this sort of fixed cost here um, so it's, it's, I'm not going to go through this, but it's worth reading um, because they do spend time sort of explaining the sort of, uh, let's say, the core economic concepts of, around SLP and and creating Axie NFTs, which are required for, for more players. Um, and then this idea of long term sustainability, which is a big debate at the moment. So how, how that's going to happen. You need player growth. Obviously, you need sort of um, axes, you know, demand for axes. So there may be an idea that axes will, are going to be at some point um, destroyed. Because that's nearly that's always what you have to ha do with an with a asset that's increasing over time, uh, unless the value, you want the value to sort of decrease. Um, and then the idea of sort of um, esports and that, that sort of stuff. Um, and um, 
there's more sort of a sort of ex explanation here of of things you know that they that Sky Mavis is sort of thinking about. So how does it think about the the floor price, the, the price of the cheapest axi? How does that change over time? Um, to do you know it's obviously going to go up if people are really interested in playing the game and think they can earn a lot of money. Um, but uh, and the breeding cost sort of needs to um, obviously the breeding cost and the, and the floor price are going to be sort of dynamic. Um, and and as you change the breeding price, make it cheaper or more expensive, then that's going to change the floor price. But you need to you can't just sort of um, uh, change them too radically. Uh, and then there's sort of the the cost here, the cost breakdown of between SLP and AXS tokens, and what happens if if, um, if the proportions are are out of line, um, and also the if the costs are too low or too high. So so yeah, so it's in a sense sort of basic stuff, but it's worth going through and, and getting kind of right in your head. It's all it's all it shows you what um, how Sky Mavis is thinking and and how it looks at the sort of the the power it has in the system. Um, obviously over time. This thing, you know, you would expect it to be done by the by the community on a vote, or, you know, in the over time, um, it seems to be most sensible to have a sort of auto balancing system, some sort of AI system, some sort of algorithm that basically just looks at the price of the AXS token, the price of the SLP token at any, you know, every from second to second, looks at the price of the uh, of the NFTs and, and what velocity is going on there, looks at the how many new players are coming in, and then it's basically always changing that, so you have much more granular control. On a day-to-day -day basis, you can start to see what's going on, um, and you know you could set that up to try and keep the the SLP price at above a certain level. It's like a central bank, really. You know, you could try and think about you want to keep inflation behind behind a certain level, and you don't care if the price of the NFT goes up and all, all that sort of stuff. I mean, it's really super complicated. Um, I don't think we're going to get that any any time soon. It'll be years away, probably. And even when the, those sort of systems goes live, there will have to be manual sort of um, fallback options, I think. But certainly in the long term, you would see. And, and expect for most blockchain games, you would have these automated sort of systems built in, which is sort of what we have already for, you know, token swapping. So when we swap tokens on Uniswap, there's no one setting the price. You're just setting the price against a, effectively a, a robot, um, which just looks at the market conditions as a bonding curve. Yeah, interesting to look at if you're interested in the details. But those things happen automatically, and, and, and clearly, I think that's where we're going to go with these more complex systems. But it is interesting to read about, and I should point out, you know. It's difficult for Sky Mavis that you know you can't please everyone all the time. Um, and as soon as you make one change, you sort of annoy one sort of subgroup of your community. But clearly, at the moment, their main community is these people in places like the Philippines and Indonesia and Venezuela and uh, India who are trying to extract you know real world value um, to make their lives better. So that's clearly a, a key audience. That's where the growth of the game has happened. So they sort of have priority over over other sort of um, I'm going to say, use the term stakeholders not really a good term but anyway you can kind of see what's going on there and, and, and these are baby steps all baby steps and to be fair to the sky mavis team you know no one's ever done this at this scale before you know no one's ever built a game economy running live um, open and, and worth billions of dollars so so it is a very difficult task in which they are undertaking and i guess all the other game teams are sort of learning from, from them how to how to deal with this sort of stuff so anyway so, so good luck to the sky mavis team um, and um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely worth reading the uh, the article, so I'll put that in the in the notes. Uh, but thanks for watching the video. Um, please subscribe to the channel, and see you again. Soon.